All right, now we're recording. No name calling while we're recording. So, as we were saying, when she stands up, I want to grab the first ankle and then the second. As we show, sometimes if you don't grab the first ankle, then it's not there anymore to grab, right? To do the double ankle sweep, I don't want to push from here. I'm already extended, right? Go back down. And I don't want to push while I'm on the ground. So. I don't want to push from all the way down here already with my hips on the mat. Because here, if she hips in, a little more like by my knees, yeah, I can get like splashed up here. So I want to do it when I'm about halfway. Go down. Oh. Oh. Right about here, before my hips touch the ground, my butt's like right in the middle of her knees. That's when I want to push. To finish that move, I lay on one side, lay on that ankle, okay? I hold on to it because what she's gonna try to do is stand in base, okay? stand in base and get that leg out. If I'm not holding that ankle, and, I'm, and number one, that's the number one mistake people make, they don't hold this ankle and you can get away from the double ankle sweep every time if they don't hold that ankle. Now I wanna get that arm. You see how she posts? Because she's trying to get up, right? And I can't reach. Sometimes you'll be able to reach it, and then you pull it to your chest. If you can't reach it, my foot is right here. I just straighten my foot, so it brings the arm to me, and I grab it, pull it to your chest. Now I can let go of the foot, because I'm going to sit up on the stomach, and bend the bottom leg. It's going right against her butt. This top knee, I throw it to the armpit. You see it like rotates around. When we were here, my head was facing this way. When I got on top, it's facing that way. So I'm not going straight, taking her straight over. I'm actually taking her sideways. The double ankle sweep. She stands up, first ankle, second ankle, boom, open, push, take a side. I'm taking this side so you guys can see. I can't reach that arm, so I kick it to myself. It's really just straightening out my leg and pull that to my chest. You gotta go up together, sit on the stomach, bend the leg, don't hurt, and then I need the arm kick. Okay. Any questions on that one? No? Okay. Everyone's muted. Alex, any questions? Okay. So I know you wanted to see how to defend the ankle sweep. So I showed how to do the ankle sweep while we're waiting for you. Uh, so now let's talk about how to defend that. Um, so more specifically, yeah. um, I feel like often with higher belts, um, when I try to do the uh, double ankle sweep, I don't know if it's their base or the way they're standing or my ankle sweep is just that bad um, that they can just stand there and withstand my trying, trying to sweep. Okay. Is there, is there a base that's more um you know so what what how it feels but then when i try to do it i get swept how it feels is they come up and they're almost over my waist and then they yeah. start yeah or is it just that my ankle, double ankle sweep is terrible no that's good um so when she goes to double ankle sweep me when i stand up first when i stand up i need to do it in a way that she's not gonna be able to get both ankles, right? So right now I have the ribs. Um, we can circle, pin the arm, right? Now if I grab this arm, I step up that side first. So she right. can't grab that first ankle, right? Now when I step up the second, she might be able to, I kind of step it back a little. She might still be able to grab it, that's fine, because she's a step behind. She wanted the first ankle, she only has the second. Hold it. Now I'm going to, Posture and pull this up, right? Start pushing this knee down and then put my knee over. And I can go into the pass from here. Right. So, actually, I had a little story about this one. Um, I think it was uh, Hillian Gracie Brown Belt. I forget. But he came to the school and, you know, me, I let the guys like talk to the students, show them what they know. You know, we share techniques. I'm not worried about that. But 
but he 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 was telling them something about doing all the moves right and following step by step. And it's funny, he goes, look, if I get uh, Brian here and tell him to do this pass, I, I won't be able to stop him, right? And and it happened to be this pass, so standing up, oh. hard, push the knee down, do the uh, knee slice outside pass. And he was trying to stop me from passing the whole time. And uh, it's just following the details and you know, that's how it works. So two hands, I pushed it down. I pushed this on her, right? So when she's having trouble standing, it's because she's trying to stand without doing anything with this here. I need stability. So I push here and I use her to help me stand up. My weight's on the wrist right here and then I stand up. Now I could get Tomonagi, right? I could get swept that way if her feet went to the hips. So what I'm going to do is squat my butt down a little low, similar to what you're talking about now, right? My butt's low, my chest is not over the head anymore, and I'm looking up. Now, that's the part where I change. Now I'm standing straight up, stretching her arm so she can't rip out the grip, right? If she's at this extreme range of motion, she doesn't have the strength to break the grip. Now I push this knee down, drop the knee over. My foot's still stapling. I like to flare my foot out a little bit, <laughs> and then I hold under the head and lay on the arm. She could get the arm back. Um, I lay on the arm because it would take it, it takes it longer to get your arm back. I put the foot. Now I can remove my leg, and then I can pass. And you can do that kind of slow, and they shouldn't be able to get out. In a competition, they're going to try a lot harder. They're not going to want the points for anything and they are gonna make it harder. Um, so you're not gonna go super slow, but you can do that move pretty slow and still get it. Um, so that would be one thing, if that's the pass you're going for, it, right? Um, there's times where I'll stand, but don't have the wrist. Yeah. To prevent being swept. So. Yeah. What about the, the uh, the underarm, where you got both hands. You show you show that, and I like it up right up until the part that I get sweat. This here? Yes, that one. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll show that too, because that's a different, a little bit different situation. I'll use it. So if I'm going to stand, let's say I don't uh, hold her wrist for whatever reason, I, I like to go one at a time. You see how I stepped up? I don't step up here where she can grab it, I step out and then I pivot and grab it. Right? It's more difficult for her to grab. And then I step up my other foot. And I'm still pushing down on her, right? And then I want to start the posture here. There's going to be different things I can work from here. I like my knee on the inside, so I probably change to that. But initially, she's going to either try to double ankle sweep me Yep. In which case, what Jen said, hold them better. What's her words? What she means is like, look how I'm holding the lapel. Try to double ankle sweep me. I just pull the lapels towards me. Now, see her feet going? Yeah, this is what I teach. When they start doing that, the feet go to the hips, hands go to the wrists. Right. And then Tomonagi. And then Tomonagi, yes. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what do I do? <laughs> so, what do I do when she, I'm pulling here, she switches to Tomonagi, now i got to put my hips low, right? Now try to do it. Uh, yeah, but you got to try myself. See, now I'm going the wrong way. So, what does she have to do? She has to switch to the double ankle now. But you can't because you're pushing it away. Yeah, way to So, the idea here is you have two spots to counterbalance the sweep. So I step up, she tries to double ankle sweep me. I pull the lapel, try to double ankle. I pull the lapel. When she tries to throw Managi, she squat my hips down. And I'll have time, because she, she had to move her feet, right? For the double ankle, she uses the back of her hamstrings. I'm pulling it. The hips, 
back up and squat. Right? So, assuming you could stay step by step with the pass, guard break, and pass without any mistakes and without them blocking something, you could just do that and you shouldn't get swept. But if something goes wrong, then you can start to employ those two things for. Double ankle, you pull the lapel towards you, like you're trying to make them do a sit-up. They need to extend their body, so they're not going to be able to push you backwards. Yeah. The other answer will be to counter that, to flip you over your head, like she did on me, and almost we almost landed on you guys. Um, and that one, you step back, and you squat your hips lower, right? And then eventually, get that knee in the middle, like combat stance, so that way you don't have to worry about either of them. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Can I ask a question about the first pass with the uh, giving giving the arm? I yeah. have a hard time. I have a hard time maintaining this arm. Okay. It's it pulled away. I'm not able to get it. <laughs> pull their elbows in. Yeah. Okay. Um, sounds like you're trying to get it. You're reaching for it. So yeah. I want it. So you start on me. I want the Two on one, right? Right. So, um, try to sweep me, right? So look, she's grabbing my wrist. And now I have wrist control, and I got it. Okay. Got it. Try again. Got it. Go again. So it's more re reactive than. Yeah, than she wants wrist okay. control. So all I'm doing, I make the C. It goes under, and I grab her and push that way. Now I have the wrist control. I push it through her stomach. Now this hand trades with that one, because I want the wrist on this one, and then I just re-grip on the forearm. Now I'm ready to go, right? So I don't, I don't go like and try to do that, right? She grabs me. That's how I do it. Okay. Can you, can you, uh, is it almost an arm drag from there? No, it's, no. it's no. a push to the belly button. Okay. Pushing it into her. One, because I want the hips down, and right. two, because I want to control the arm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're not going to, you're not going to pull the arm until you're ready to posture and stand straight up. That's when you're going to stretch your arm, right? So. I do the pass again. So I got my, uh, someone was asking one of the other videos to grip on the lapel. So I have my fingers, I put them together and my thumbs wrap. My palms are going down. I kind of do that with my palm, right? I don't hold it like a fist because that can bend my wrist. I go this way, right? So I'm this way on both hands. The top one is just under her rib cage. The bottom one is in her belly, right? I feel her breathing harder, so it must be pushing on her lungs a little bit or stomach. My arms are almost locked out, but not quite. I'm turning my elbows inward, not out, right? So that's how I do that, right? Uh, I just learned that as reins of a horse, but I guess if you're horse riding, it's similar. Now, she grabbed my wrist control, and I want that two on one. So I just circle, put it down, switch hands, and adjust my other hand. I'm looking up, I'm postured up. I step, step, now I pull. All right? This is, I'm actively pulling that way, stretching her arm out. Push, drop back. Here, under, push back, cut it out, free the foot, and pass. Did we lose one? I think so. Yeah. Heard the sound.
Am I the only one doing this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, my, my dummy doesn't have legs. Oh. <laughs> we lost Juan? Yeah. Juan John is missing. He's here where I start to lose it. Right there. But I lose the hand. It's hard to do when there's no resistance at all. <laughs> so you want to hook his leg before you high leg out. If I go here and I tap this part, oh, whoops. Out, yep. I don't hook her leg and I high leg out, she's going to get half to her. Yeah. All right. Or she's gonna close her guard. Right? She's, I need to hook this. So now try to do anything. Right? Okay? It's staying like this a long time. Okay. Thought I was missing something. Yeah. You won't be able to just get on top because I'm gonna put my foot behind me. Okay, that makes sense. <clears throat> um, I think now, this, this can be considered just a basic guard pass, or maybe yeah. not basic, but no, it is. It's uh, one of the more basic ones. So you, you have your guard breaks and your guard passes, right? So we're doing uh, what Combo. blue belt is called standing to open the guard. That's what we're doing here, and then the pass is the knee slice outside pass. Okay. So. When I ask to see uh, standing to open the guard, you can do any pass you want, but this is the opening that I want to see, right? And then when I right. ask for the knee slice pass to the outside, you can do any guard break you want, but I want to see the finish that you saw here for the pass. That, that finish, okay. Yeah, so I break it up into two parts. Because some, some passes fit really good together, like these two. Um, yeah. You might do a different one, right? Okay. Um, Mike, I know what I was going to talk about. Yeah, Alex, yeah? Go my, ahead. My gi go-to has been the one. Uh, oh, the armpits. Well, that one and the where I'm. So I'm coming here with the gi and coming across. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know you don't like that, do you? Because of the omoplata. You're giving an arm bar and omoplata, yeah. Yeah. Is there any way to make this one safer? Because this is really horrible for the person on bottom. <laughs> or is that just? I mean, just a, I I usually armbar the guy when he does it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll work on, a, on another one. You can't. You can. So, here's the thing. Look what you got me teaching. All right. It's just so horrible for the person on the bottom. <laughs> Sorry, Rita. Here's uh, the thing. If I tripod up and I'm trying to choke her, right? Right. So you would arm bar me. All right. So she needed to swing her hip out, right? From here to out here, to arm bar me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to block the hip with my knee. Okay. And I'll try to arm bar me. Right. Right? So yep. probably get the choke on her. I have to block the hip with my knee. Okay. So that way she can't armbar me. So instead of armbar, uh, omoplata at that point, I just release it, right? Try to omoplata. And I okay. She sat up, but you'd probably get side control. Yeah. Right? If you sit up, I get the back. Yeah. So here, she has omoplata. Boom. 
So use your knee on the same side as your arm to block the hip from swinging out. Yeah. Obviously, this only works in D. So. Uh, yeah, because you can't throw the, I mean, on the streets, right? You could use your the street. streets. Yeah. I don't live in Juan's neighborhood. I don't even know what the streets are. I yeah, I was looking like for Juan, but he's not on there. Yeah. Well, I stopped doing this one because you told me to stop. Don't let me forget about the armpits. Okay. That? Don't let me forget about putting the lapel in the armpit. Yeah. Let's go something else. Um, before I forget the other thing. So, standing to break the guard. There. You're having a trouble because they're kind of squatting here and not letting you flip them and not letting you uh, double ankle sweep them back, right? right. So you got you can change. You don't have to do those two. What I was doing. You do things like the knee bar sweep. Okay. Right, so she's here. She's not letting me double ankle sweep because she's stepping in, right? Because maybe she's pulling my, my pill. And she's not letting me Tomonagi because she's sitting at weight down. So I can just turn my knee down. I hook under her leg. Turn back. Knee bar sweep. I can sweep that way. Go for knee bars if they're allowed, right? And go tap that. You can change up your guard. You could do. Uh, can I say that one more time, coach? <laughs> That's a good one. Lie down. All right, yeah. So up. So I'll do it without all the other stuff, right? Right. So, I'm not going to try to double ankle. I'm not going to try to tomanagi. Just the simple bare bones. I need to hook under her leg. So use the, the back of your hand. See how it snakes really easy? Okay. I open my guard. And I'm going to, with this leg, I'm turning it that way. Can you see that good? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Normally this way, I turn it that way. Right. This leg swings up. And I bring my butt in the air. I want to hug her leg. Right? Once I get here, the outside knee shoots through. And I can throw both legs through. I can keep this one tucked and this one out. As long as I'm squeezing the leg, as long as my hips are on the thigh side of the knee, right? And I'm hugging the heel. Now if I hip in, and arch back, that'll be a knee bar. Yeah. Remember when we did the leg lock stuff on one of the videos, talked about loving the leg, right. the side of the foot that your head goes, and the side that their foot goes on your head, it should be on the floor side, right? And your ears right by the toes, and you're hugging that leg, and then she won't be able to turn her knee and get out. Okay. Um, armpits. Yeah. So the armpit one, I guess it's standing to break the guard, but I'm not doing the same guard break. Uh, I'm doing the log splitter. So I go hands in the lapel, just normal grip, like thumbs around the inside, fingers on the outside, and I'm going to punch up into the armpits. See how her hands went up? Yeah. Her hands from getting any grips on me. I'm gonna put my forehead down and I step up one on one side and two on the other side, right? One, two, and now I'm gonna put my foot right in the center, my knee, I, I need my foot flat, and I'm gonna step my other foot back sitting on my shin like combat stance. And that knee slices right through, it's right close to my elbow. I don't need this side anymore. I like to hold this side, but I let the slack go just so I can feel the movement. When she moves, I feel like you From here, I like a knee slice inside pass. So I do the log splitter when I do the lapels in the armpit. Yeah. And then if you're doing that, they can't double ankle sweep you. Now, is that from a 
I know she she just has open gi. Does that does it matter? You have to grab lapels on that armpit one, or can you just kind of get up? So the no gi version? No, no, not not so much the no gi. I'm I'm saying like with with the gi. Yeah. If if they have the gi, you have to Even have lapels. Slide, this will open up as much as you need. Even though okay. it's long and it's still in the belt, right. I can get that in the armpits. Even with so, the okay. In the belt. Yeah. Okay. And then no gi, I can just hold the armpit too, or the bicep. Bicep. Right. So worst case, you just can't get the lapel where you want it. You can go biceps. I do that a lot in no gi. I mean in gi, just because I try not to rely on the gi if I can help it. So I'm here. Boom. Yeah, fix it. I actually grab the lapel on that one, but you don't need to. So I'm going to form most to the inner thigh. I like to hold the hip to control the knee. Uh, no gi. I just hold the head. Let me ask you a question. When you're um, when you're going to start the log splitter, yeah, are you going? You're, are you taking any time to stand and prepare it, or are you going directly to it? You know what I mean. So instead, of, so we're here, here, stand up, and then go log splitter, or are you already? Is your knee already on the way by the time you get up? You know what I mean. Yeah. So I place. I do it right away. Right. Okay. But that's because I drilled uh, drilled it a lot, right? Okay. In the beginning, you're going to have to take your time. Here's what I see people mess up on. So this way. When they do the log splitter, they, they go like this. And they put their knee right in that person's butt. You see my heels up? Yeah. And I'm on my toe. So now when I go to sit down, she's on my leg. Yep. And then I put her back. Yeah. Or they go here, it's not in the middle, and they're like this, right? So what I need to do is, let's say you're doing, I like to set this up with the knee and the tailbone um, guard break because it puts my knee where I want my foot, right? So, so I put my knee in the middle, and I try to stretch her out, right? Her guard open. Well, let's say it didn't open. I have a little bit of space now that I made. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to step up one. And now when I step up, I'm going to put my foot where my knee is. I'm going to take away some of the other steps. So I step up. See where my knee is right here? Yep. That's where my foot's going to go. And look, it's flat. Okay. My foot's flat. So now when I sit back, the knee came right through. The knee came right through the guard, right? Because this was really close to my chest because my foot was flat. So here, if I, actually, here. So if I'm on my toe, and then I go to sit back, they're landing right here. And then I right. put my knee to the mat with their butt. If I put my foot flat, Look at that straight, straight. And the knee's close to my chest. They don't have a guard around my chest. So this slices right through and opens the guard. It's like a wedge. So let's go this way. This comes right through the middle. Yeah, see, it comes right through the middle. Yeah, sorry, keeping with this, when when you stand, if they come up with you, if they bring their guard up with you, can you are you still able to do that? In other words, yeah, yeah. So um, part of it is preparing it, like I like to prepare it with the knee in the middle guard break in the in the tailbone because it creates some space. Right. So I start with this. I start with this. Because either her guard's gonna open or she has to close it again. Right? So close it. Close it. 
There. So it's still not closed, but she has to go higher to close her guard. When she goes higher, there's more, it's so hard to see, but there's space in between us now because she put her guard higher, right? So now that space that my knee's gonna fill up. I'm come up here. Yeah, I'll hold your guard better. Here, do it on me. So she's gonna try to stretch me with the knee and the tailbone. Put your knee in the middle. Okay, so I feel like my feet are ready to pop open right now. So what I'm gonna do is either I let it open, right? Or I'm gonna have to go higher with my guard. So I go higher. Now there's space for her. No, you don't do that. Now you do lug splitting. Now there's space. See, it came right out and it forced my guard to pop open, right? Because there was space. If she doesn't uh, try to stretch me out first, so I just uh, do lug splitter without stretching me out. I can keep my hips really close to her hip. And now yeah. the foot of the knee, I feel it, it's almost in the right spot, but it's really hard. Try. Yeah, see? Yeah. It's painful. It sucks. But <laughs> I was going to say that doesn't look comfortable. Work technically, right? So I might open because it sucks, but it didn't technically open it, right? Good. So now she creates a little space first. Now I try to open it. Put it higher. Now she can go a lot of space and it slices right through. Make sense? So if you can prepare it first with like trying to open it a different way and then go to the log splitter. Um, there's one pass I see a lot or guard break I see a lot people trying and I don't know, it never worked on me and I don't usually see it working. Um, every once in a while. But it's like a log splitter, but what they do is they, they jump up with both feet at the same time, and then they use their both knees like that to try to, I don't know, it's in their hips, like in the bones of their hip, but nothing to make it pop open. Mm. I, it's more like MMA school, jujitsu guys do it. I don't want to say which school, but uh, I've seen that. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, it just never seemed to work. I had uh, one guy I trained with a lot once a week. We went to the same spot and trained, and he was from one of the schools I'm thinking of, and he would try it every time we rolled, and it never once worked, you know? Mm. And I really didn't, at that time, because I was still new, didn't really know what he was trying to do. It's like, didn't make sense. I was like, okay, I get it. Like, I feel your knee and my butt bones, but it's not making my guard open, right? So. And I didn't have a good guard back then either. So it's just, I don't, that one doesn't work, but the knee slide, the knee uh, log splitter does the knee right in the middle because it's a wedge, right? What else? Um, so does that start starting to make more sense when you stand up the position that you want, your options as the bottom guy, right? Yeah. If you can't get the double ankle sweep, just go for a, a different one, you know? Um, now, Coach, when you yeah. when you did the the knee bar, you were saying there was something else as well. So I don't uh, know if you forgot. Oh, yeah, you can go back yeah. and some stuff. There's a lot. There is a lot. Yeah. There, is, there is one I do want to show, but I'll show you something like a back kick that you can do. Um, so you're gonna. Oh my god! I mean, this, I don't want to get too fancy or anything, but. So she starts to stand up. I can do similar. Well, I can do a standing noble quad too, right? So that's that's there, right? When she stands, I can do noble quad. I can go X guard, right? So that's kind of what I was trying to get at. Like I could go and from X guard, I could go take the back, right? I don't want to get too complicated, but you could do that. You could just go to a different guard, right? You don't have to try to keep the closed guard, and you don't have to keep trying to get the Double ankle sweep. Um, Hello, from there, instead of doing the, the tripod sweep, maybe. Okay. You could go to the tripod sweeps, right? There's one I want to show. Um, <laughs> I learned it as a waiter sweep. Of course he did, Jen. 
but it's not the same waiter sweep that you, I usually show, okay? It's similar to the double ankle. Um, let's go this way. Or a muscle sweep. I've seen it, heard it called a muscle sweep too. So when she stands up, I hook, instead of going double ankle, I hook the leg. Like I'm making a muscle, right? And then I hit, uh, let's turn over there actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I hook her foot like I'm making a muscle. It helps to have the same opposite sleep. And then I actually will hit that way, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can come up and do my sweep as normal. When that doesn't work, I can take my other hand and push. So I go kind of like you're going to do a wrestler bridge, and then I push off that, that ha have added force into that sweep. So she stands up, I hook under, boom, it's not working, I push. And then I can come up. So I just put my hand behind. So that's where muscle sweep or waiter sweep, the names always get mixed around depending on where you're from, what school you learned it at, and who taught it to you. Now with the same defense, the same defenses from the previous kind of work, or something like that is squat down with your weight or no? Is yeah, that... yeah, and lean forward, right? Lean forward, yeah. If you can get the grip, so notice I broke her grip before I had to do it because she had, she did the standing with the two on one. That's going to stop me from hooking under her Being leg. Able to grab under, right. I got a hand fight, I got to break the grip, then I get the one that I want, right? And then if I can't, I have the opposite sleep control. She breaks that grip, now I got to go uh, waiter sweep style, right? <laughs> but if she gets that grip on me, now I can't go waiter sweep. Right, she's got my control now. I can't push her. I only have the leg hooked. I'm gonna have to go knee bar sweep or something like that. Right? I'm gonna have to change it again. Right, so you're fighting that tree. Uh, your 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 center of gravity. So your hips are your center of gravity usually. So whether you're staying straight up or if you squat, it's gonna change. The lower your center of gravity, the harder it is to sweep you. Right. Um, and then where you put your weight. Right, so if it's, they want to take you backwards, you put it forward. Now they got to take you all that distance, it's going to be harder. But if they want to take you forward, like over their head, and you're leaning you forward, gotta, you got to drop your hips. Yeah, you're helping them, so you got to drop your hips and posture to bring your upper body back a little bit. And so that's why those work like an A and B back and forth type of movement. Um. Jen wrote, Ted said turtle. What about turtle? All of, of course he did. <laughs> turtle is not a guard. Turtle, right? <laughs> turtle is not a guard. <laughs> what about turtle? Let's see what they write. I think it was the, uh, in reference to the sweeps. Just, just turtle. turtle. <laughs> just turtle. There's nothing else. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Yes, turtle. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer. So much for turtle. There's a lot. Turtle's not just, people think of it really basic, like, okay, I don't want to get choked and I need to get guard somehow. But there's way more to being in turtle that you could do. That could be a yeah. whole a whole seminar by itself. By itself, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you, like I said, I, I've learned a lot more about it myself. No, yeah. like you know, all the sweeps from it, the chokes from it. The, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a turtle attack on the turtle. I don't want to try to remember a new, brand new, not brand new, but an old move. Uh, go to turtle. Normal turtle, back up a little bit, and it's like uh, I don't know, there's a lot of attacks here, but 
You know, people think that they have to attack the turtle, but you can get them in a new position, right? So like, just kind of brainstorm because it's the old move that I forgot. But uh, there's a move where you can just like, you throw your leg over the head, and you just roll them over here. Right? <laughs> now she's in side control, so I don't have to attack the turtle anymore. Right. And the actual move, a little more detailed than that, that's just kind of the idea, right? We're kind of working on concepts. So the head is a post. I put my leg over it, not to hurt the leg, but to kind of trip it, give it something to flip over. And then I'm holding the far hip. I think the original move, I come in, get the wrist control here from the head. Here you have wrist control here. I pass it through the legs. Yeah. That's what we call a ball and chain, right? So now, yeah. I, so now I throw this over. See, I'm pulling on the arm. Oh, yeah. And attack the side. So there's so much the turtle in the attacking and also the defending, attacking from the turtle. Uh, and it's not just like clock choke or they pull guard, right? Or rear naked choke with the hooks. There's so so much to it that you could do. Yeah. But I always like the idea of like change the position, right? You don't have to always attack the same position that you've been attacking. You can change it up a little bit. Oops, I lost the chat. So did that help with the standing standing stuff? Yeah, I just have to do it. I just have to do it more often. Yeah. Yeah, you just drill it, you know? Like guys here, the guys that are here, um, you know, we're doing stuff that some of the other guys are not doing. So yeah. obviously that helps. Uh, there's things like drilling that a lot of people don't do, but it helps a lot, right? We all want to roll, it's fun. Um, fun to roll. But drilling, like that's that's how you get better at something because you get to do it so many times. In a roll, you can try to make a position happen, but you can't guarantee that you're going to get to do it more than five times in a night, right? Because your partners just might not let you. But if you're drilling, you can purposefully do that one position and do it right without any yep. messing you up, right? You can do it like 50 times, 100 times, or whatever, whatever you guys agree on. Um, so if you can find someone that likes to drill and you do one move that you like and they do a move that they like and you maybe just do it 20 times. You don't have to be 50. I always say 50, but do it like 10, 20 times. Just a little bit just to get the habit of drilling started and then you roll. That's what I did on most of the moves that I wanted to get better at. I found someone that would let me uh, drill it and then I would let them drill on me and we would do that before we rolled, right? That's like before we roll, we're gonna drill something, you know, and that's what we did. I'm down. I like drilling. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Now that I know more, <laughs> I mean more stuff, Alex. I would. I mean, yeah. drill I'm, I'm every night. I'm drilling after after we're done with this. Yeah. yeah. If you don't, know, if you don't know what you want to work on, just drill whatever they're drilling, right? Especially right. the higher belt, you know. Yeah. Because they'll get to teach you the move, which helps them learn it better. And then they get to feel you do the move on them so they can see if how it feels when it's done right and how it feels when it's done wrong. And that's also going to help them too. So a lower belt can, you know, you're helping the higher belt when you drill with them, you know, right. He needs a, a live body to drill on, you know, and he can go through and like I said, feel if it feels right, feels wrong. He can teach it. When you teach it, you start to realize like, well, I'm telling them to do this, but I don't even do this. So <laughs> the part, right? you start to realize the parts of the move that you're not doing, you know, and uh, and then you just little by little correct it and then you roll and then you try to do it live, you know, if you get a chance. But that's the try way you guarantee that you get to practice a move is with drilling. Right. So that's yeah. why that's important. Well, I, I tell you, drilling with the dummy while it, I mean, it, uh, Chewy did a whole 45 minute thing about how like, drilling with a dummy is worthless. I yes. disagree because I can I can choke this dummy a million times and nobody's gonna die. Like, right. And I feel too 
So like when we were doing the darts, I could feel where I wasn't hitting the net. When I'm doing a baseball bat show, no, no D, I can feel, okay, well, you know what, I've got to move a little bit. Or I realize that I'm not grinding my, uh, turning my wrist in to lift up the chin. Yeah. I'm not going to do that 15 times to my partner. Yeah. yeah. There's certain things that the dummy is good for, like chokes. I would definitely agree with that. You can set up a nice collar choke, get the grips, work on your flexibility, right? Because for me, that's something that's difficult, work on the flexibility of getting your grips right. And then the squeeze. And once you get the squeeze right, you can squeeze super hard, right? You can't do that yeah. in person. Yeah. So you can actually develop the, you don't need a lot of strength to choke somebody. But if it really counts, if it really matters, your life depends on it, you want to know that you have a good hard squeeze. You, know? you get that, that full range of motion. Yeah. Because you know? they said if somebody taps People here, tap really. you know what I mean? Where as opposed to, yeah. you know, getting it in there. In but yeah, really in Chewy's defense, I think that video was made before lockdown. <laughs> you know what I mean? Probably. You can actually go to class and, and, I mean, and drill like crazy. I, oh, so you saw the video? Yeah. I did, yeah. Yeah, because I, I did the same thing. And I was like, I was disappointed, but I was like, wait a minute. This was before we got locked in our houses. Yeah. I mean, so I'm I, sure I'm he changes sure. tune. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah. in this situation, he would say, yeah, you're dumb. As opposed to <laughs> exactly. To yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Jiu-jitsu is hard to, there's parts of, what I'm trying to say is the dummy is going to help with certain things. So there's right. certain moves in jiu-jitsu that you can't do 100% correct and do the complete move. Well, transitions. When I show moves, I hold the moves so loose because everybody taps before I'm done showing the move, right? So I hold the move super loose. I'll show parts correctly I break them up okay I'm going to show this piece then this piece then this piece so that way I can hold the other previous pieces loosely so I can show the other parts right, right. and even then some people are tapping before I'm done even even holding everything loose right holding everything incorrect that's good though that means jujitsu works right and if right. I get everything right they the break or the the tap, so to speak, is going to happen in an inch of movement, right? But we need to be able to practice complete, right? You want to know that an arm bar that you could hip up all the way, right? And so to yeah. get a dummy that has some PVC in it or something with joint that will feel more realistic, now you can hip up, you feel that resistance and know how hard you would actually have to hip up if you were really gonna do it, right? You can't do that on a person, you know? Uh, yeah. The choke, you know, the, the ankle locks, right? Heel hook, you can't really practice. You know, <laughs> that doesn't mean you're not gonna get it in a competition because you never did it on a dummy, but you're not really practicing 100% the way that you could, right? So I think just like rolling, you need to also drill. And when you roll, you need to go with someone that you can beat and someone you can't beat and then somewhere right even with you, I think you also should drill with a dummy and, and do some solo exercises, you know, not because we have to right now, but because like, that's what our warm up is, right? We're doing sit outs, we're doing rolls, we're doing stuff without a partner, right? And when we get the dummy out and we throw them, it's because you can't five point throw a person 50 times, you know, safely, right? You know, mm -hmm. we did it in wrestling, we did it all the time, but we also had mats and we had crash pads and, you know, we, we were young, so. <laughs> but I also threw the dummy probably 20 times as much as I threw real people, you know, because I didn't have people available, um, you know, before class, after class, during lunch periods, I would go in the wrestling room and throw the dummy because there wasn't a person available, you know? What's that? She said I could. <laughs> I could throw somebody. Yeah. One second. Yeah, I mean, I think that... I think we need a mix of everything, right? Yeah. I mean, the main thing, obviously, with the exception of the... Um, 
feedback is transitions with a dump. Right. You can't transition with a dump. There's no way to do it because they're not responding. Yeah, that's the other side of the coin, right? The dummy doesn't react. The dummy doesn't move realistically. You know, um, it's letting you do the move, but you don't always want the person to let you do the move. Right. Sometimes you need a little bit of like realistic movement. But yeah, because I was I was doing. <laughs> I realized that last week I told you I forgot how to do a, a baseball bat show for Bill Gee. It wasn't that I forgot how to do it. It was look at look at where the arms are on the dummy. Yeah, it's not in a realistic position. The arms are not going to be here if I've got neon belly. And I'm like, why can't I get a baseball bat show up here? What's going <laughs> on? Do I have to go over here? Why do I suck so bad at this? But, I mean, realistically, his arms are not going to be there. Right. He's not going to be here like that. His hand position is going to be different. Yeah. So, so that's why I, I got frustrated the other night, and that's when I texted you. I was like, can you do a baseball bat show? Because apparently I forgot how to do it. Yeah. Not that I forgot. It's just that this is not where I would be. This is, you know, this wouldn't be happening. Arms in the air. Mm -hmm. So, but it's interesting working with the dummy, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's better than nothing. Yes, sir. Let's stop that.